on the next day show. Makeovers of the Richard Bay staff. You've never met them. Meet them. You'll get to see the beauties behind the Bay show. I fantasize him looking like a GQ cover. And we're making their dreams come true. I want you to look like a girl. I feel like I was pampered for once because I'm always taking care of everything else around here. She looks fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Staff makeovers. Next day show. Hey, Billy. How you doing? Morning, guys. Late again. Hey, and how are you doing today? Thanks for joining us on the Richard Bay Show. Now, if you watch this show every day, you probably think, boy, the life of a talk show host must be like lifestyles of the rich and famous limo to work, pampered from the moment he walks in. Forget about that on the Richard Bay Show. I drive myself in every day, grab a cup of coffee, and come in here into the madhouse to meet with all the people behind the scenes, the people that you never get to see, the people, the producers who make up the games and book the guests, the audience bookers who make sure that there's an audience sitting behind me, the travel people who make sure that the guests get flown in and pick up their tickets and are here on time. You're going to meet all those people today. And boy, I've got a big surprise for them. It can be a madhouse in here. How you doing, Carrie? Everything going fine? Every day, the producers, I know it's crazy every day, the producers have to come up with guests and we have to have different shows every day. They're so well organized, though, that... Well, that, that's today's show right there on the floor. <laughs> I bet you people out here think that, uh, that working on a talk show is a glamorous profession, don't you think so? Of course. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> of course not. You don't know what chaos exists backstage and all during the day just to make this hour happen. But of course the producers and the audience bookers and the administrative people who work on this program know what that's like. And because they spend all that time and because everything is done at the last moment, because there's such a demand on you to produce every single day, they pay very little attention to their appearance. On our stage right now is Joanne, a young lady who fell in love with one of our associate producers, <sighs> Scotty. Please welcome her to the show. <clears throat> and there is the man that she loves. Scotty, our associate producer. He is boundless with energy and imagination, uh, but not uh, too uh, quick on the fashion sense. Right, Joanne? Right. Right. How would you describe Scotty's look? Uh, grungy, sloppy. Sloppy? Yeah. Scotty? Well, I mean, it's just Scotty, low I, maintenance, you know? Low uh, maintenance, you know, yeah. It, uh, most nights when I leave the station here, I see the two of you all laughing and giggling and flirting with each other, uh, you know, as we, as we leave the uh, studio. But uh, are, were you trying to project some kind of image with the way that you dress, Scotty? Uh, I don't think I'm trying to project an image. It's just, I, you, work, you work us so hard here, Richard, at the show. You know, we have no time to, to worry about our appearance. Well, yes, it's I know. It's that. I mean, you're, you're upstairs All right, stop away. it, stop it. <laughs> Next, he'll be going on about the pay. But, Scotty, there is one advantage to working on The Richard Bay Show. You will get a surprise makeover on this show for our staff. You will be coming back later on in this broadcast looking like a million bucks. Would you appreciate that, Joanne? Oh, yes. What could you imagine him looking like? Oh, I just, I love him, but I just, I fantasize him looking like a GQ cover. A little I, more slick. Oh, you know? yeah. I could sort of see that. What's wrong with this? <laughs> All right, so uh, could you see yourself from um, uh, GQ there, Scotty? Absolutely not. It is sort of hard to imagine, but it will happen later on <laughs> in this broadcast when you get taken away in an emergency makeover! <laughs> when he comes back, 
I don't know if he will look GQ or not, but he will certainly, uh, there'll be a big improvement over what he looked like just now. Now, also on our staff is a, is a young lady who's worked with me for years and has uh, two careers. Uh, you'll hear about them in this tape. Her name is Michelle. That was, that was Michelle, and there she was, and uh, yes, she does have that wild rock and roll streak in her, but she also has that wild rock and roll hair that looks like uh, sometimes you never wash it or wake up with it, and I think that we could do better for her in our fantasy makeover. Michelle is back up there, and they've been working hard on her new look. Can we take a look at Michelle? <laughs> you look great. I heard that crack about my hair, Rich. Well, I mean, well, <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's, it's finally listening to you. It's laying flat there. D don't you like the way you look? I like it a lot. I can never do this every day, but I love it. Why can't you do this I'm every day? Take it. Yeah. Well, can you have Come a Take a little spin around. Hand? Let's take a look at that. Wow. <laughs> You do look, uh, you do look fabulous. What Thank do you think you. this says about you, this sort of look? What kind of image do you, are you trying to project with this look? I feel like a million bucks, Richard. But you are happy with the way you look yeah, now. Yeah, I, I like it. It's, it's different. I, I don't feel like the same person. Yeah. <laughs> well, it looks great. Thank you. It's a whole new image for you. Sitting next to you, though, is Diane, who is the mother of one of our staff members. She is Elizabeth's mother. Now, what? Yes, so that's it's Elizabeth's Elizabeth. mother. Yeah, yeah, you never met her? Say no. hi. Nice uh -huh. to meet you, Michelle. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, but this show is a surprise for all of us. We're not usually on the show. Hello, Elizabeth's mother. Now, hi. let's talk about your daughter. Because uh, Michelle, I, I, even though we joked about her hair, Michelle does take time to put her outfits together a lot. Wh what, how do you think your daughter dresses? She probably stops at a garage sale on the way here. <laughs> probably the third day in the garage sale. <laughs> well, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. No, because I think Elizabeth does um, uh, cultivate a sort of New York East Village look for those of you around the country who don't know it. It's, it's sort of anti-fashion, right? Yes. If you were going to buy a piece yes. of clothing for your daughter, what would you look for? The ugliest thing I could find. The ugliest thing you and could find. And it always works. What would you like for your daughter? What would I like for her yeah, to wear? what would you like for her to look? I would like her to look more feminine. I would like her to wear a dress once in a while. I would like to be in charge of her again. She, when she was smaller, I was in charge. Well, when you were in charge, when she was a little girl, what did you make her look like? Oh, she was cute. 
Well, what did she look well, like? Frilly and lacy. Pebbles Flintstone dresses, or something like that? Little you know? lace things on her panties, so when she bent over, I don't know. So you know, maybe cute. she's reacting. Curls, the little She's reacting to and... all of that uh, parental control over her appearance, maybe. The because... parental control lasted until she was maybe three. Oh, uh, well, okay. Well, this is, what, this is the look she's cultivated since the yes. age of three. Elizabeth, would you please walk out? Elizabeth, you love your mom, but you heard her concerns. Now, <laughs> did I say anything that was incorrect? I mean, it, it is sort of an anti-fashion look that you have, yeah, that's right? Yeah, true. And your mom would like you to tell her what you wanted to look like? I want you to look like a girl. Uh, I don't think I need big hair and nails to look like a girl. Just once I'd like you to say, oh, darn, I broke my nail. Wait a second. Uh, it sounds to me like our emergency makeover team is going in. Elizabeth, at least for one day, you're going to make your mom happy with your appearance. While Elizabeth is in her emergency makeover session, we're going to take a break. But come back in just a few moments after these commercials, because there are more people on the Richard Baso staff for you to meet, and more people to be made over by the end of this broadcast. Stay with us. Everybody gets fired from a job, dumped by a lover, or loses money or jewelry. Why, it's even happened to me. But you are or know somebody who has all these things happen to them at once or constantly. You know someone who attracts bad luck like a magnet. Well, pick up that phone and call me at 1-800-392-8499. The first time you've gotten to meet the staff of the Richard Bay Show. Well, you can see them before and you can see them after. A stupendous makeover. And this man sitting on our panel right here is John, who is not on our staff, but is engaged to our wonderful office production assistant, Kerry. When are you guys getting married? We're getting married in May. You're getting married in May, so it's coming up pretty, uh, pretty soon, huh? Pretty soon, yeah. Okay, um, Kerry is a person who seems to do the same thing most of the time, right? Yeah. In terms of the way she looks. Yeah. She doesn't change her look very much. Uh, well, occasionally, but not too much. She's been very busy. We got the wedding coming up. She has a six and a half year old son that she could she runs straight home from work to get him from school. So she's got a like frazzled that. lifestyle. She's, yeah, she's doesn't frazzled she? all the time. Well, let's see how frazzled her lifestyle is as we look at this tape. Harry, I'm sorry to interrupt you because I know you're organizing things so well. I was telling them what you do. Can you tell them exactly what those jobs are? Well, every morning um, after we tape the show. From the night before, I organize the folder and write up show descriptions. Right. And I type up whatever memos people need. I give them autographs for this. Right, autograph I'm, pictures. You help me with the fan mail, yes, I know that. I you keep that, that organized, because I do read every single letter that you write me. I do. And um, that, uh, the most important job, though, the most important job in the entire office is in Carrie's hands. And everybody comes to her and bows to her on a Friday because of this job. What do you do on Fridays? Paychecks. She hands out the paychecks. Thank you so much, yeah. Carrie, for that. But with all of that, um, hello, Shakey's Pizza, we deliver. We'll be right back to you. Would you like a pepperoni? Oh. <laughs> I love to create some chaos in your order, Carrie. Okay, Carrie, with all of that attention to detail that you have to give, you don't spend much attention to the details of your cosmetic look, do you? No, I don't. Okay. In yeah. the morning, I just I wake up, shower, get dressed, and leave the house. Believe me, let me see this. I, you, you, are not, you don't even wear makeup. No, I don't. She doesn't wear makeup. She hasn't changed her hairstyle in six years. That's what Carrie looked like when she showed up. Carrie, please step on out. Our lovely office production assistant, Carrie. Dressed as the blessing bride she soon will be. A little sneak peek for you, John of your lovely bride. <laughs> Carrie, you look absolutely fabulous there. Thank you. Oh, and, and soon you... <laughs> uh, what do you think, John? Uh, she looks fantastic. Yeah, I'm and just I'm wondering... Sure... Uh... <laughs> if you think that's good, if you think that's good, 
Wait until the real day. I, I can't wait. She'll look even better. The only thing is this. I just want to warn the two of you. Do not take a long honeymoon because we're all waiting for our paycheck. <laughs> if you're gone during, for too long of a time, we're, we're not going to be able to pay our rent. You look absolutely... Well, how do you think we're going to take our honeymoon? We're taking the paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to take a break, but we'll be right back in just a moment with more makeovers of the Richard Bay staff. You've never met them. Meet them after these commercials. We'll be right back. on the Richard Bay Show staff like you've never seen them, but like I've never seen them before. Now, Joanne, you are Scotty's boyfriend, and Scotty, Girlfriend. Scotty Girlfriend. is backstage. Girlfriend, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> now, that would be an interesting show, wouldn't it, folks? Scotty is back there getting that GQ look together. You're ready to see your man all spruced up, all ready to hit the town with you tonight. Scotty, Please step on out, suave man that you are. What, 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 didn't you, you had facial hair before, didn't you? It's, uh, it's, uh, it broke my heart, they made me shave. Uh, well, it broke your heart? What were you trying to do with that goatee? Uh, well, yeah, what were you trying to do with it, honey? Yes. Well, you know what, have you, you haven't kissed him since he's had it off. Give him a good kiss and feel that baby face skin. Go ahead. Go ahead and Scotty. <laughs> yes? How's that? Oh, oh boy, that is cool. Jo Joanne, you like this better? Oh, yes. Yes, it's you wonderful. do. Wonderful. Look at how she's beaming. Yeah. All right, well, we had another complainer over here, Diane, complaining about her daughter Elizabeth and wanted her to pay a little bit more attention and perhaps dress in a more feminine fashion. Elizabeth was taken out of here kicking and screaming because she likes to uh, sort of have an in your face kind of, uh, you know, savvy East Village New Yorker look. Well, we have done wonders with your daughter, Elizabeth. Look at this picture of her before the show and actually on the show when she came here. There she was. Now, Elizabeth has gone, undergone a total transformation. Let's take a look at the new Elizabeth. <laughs> Mom, have you ever seen her like this before? No, only in my dreams. <laughs> oh, my God. She looks great. I, it, isn't it fabulous? Yeah. Very now, nice. <laughs> do you feel comfortable dressed like this, Elizabeth? These shoes are a little difficult, and the hose are impossible. I encourage all men to try this once, and you will never complain about how your women look again. The, the, high, the high heels. You, you never wear high heels? No. They're, they're, well, you know, my boots have heels, but okay, I wear but, my combat. But you never combat. wear a dress or a skirt either, Elizabeth? No, sometimes, but, you know, it, it's... Too much trouble. Well, stand up for one more moment so your mom can get a good look at you. There, Mom. <laughs> There's your lovely daughter. Now, imprint that. Imprint that on your brain's memory because I have a feeling you will never, never see her like again. this again. All right. There's a man in the audience here, though, that picked out a member of our staff as she was walking around earlier on in the show. And what were you telling me about her? I said that she's very attractive, and um, I would like to get to meet her. Yeah, that was Griselle. And Griselle is a beautiful young lady. I don't know how they could improve upon her, but you saw her before the makeover, and you thought she was beautiful. That's right. She, As, don't, she, don't, she doesn't need any improvement. Well, uh, some people think that she does, because they took her off and improved her. But this is Griselle, who is um, a uh, production assistant on the show. This is her before her makeover. Take a look at this clip. 
This is Grizel. She is a production assistant on The Richard Bay Show. Now, you may not know what a production assistant does, but basically, they do everything that has to be done at the last minute. All the things we've forgotten about, but have to be taken care of at the very last moments before we go on the air. Grizel, would you tell them some of the things that you have done on The Richard Bay Show? Well, I have to go and pick up all the costumes for the show. Right. We buy pies to throw all over people. I have to babysit, get money. Babysit? We do everything around here. Yes, you do. The phones, everything. Yes, she has to babysit me when I get cranky, because about 3 o'clock, if I don't have my nappy, I need a babysitter. Grizel, you do all that, and you do it all so well, and at the same time, you look absolutely gorgeous. Look at this beautiful hair, those sparkling eyes. How do you, what, look at me. This is me before makeup. I'm a mess, but she comes in and looks this I don't beautiful. I like this every day, though. Yes, you do. No, I don't. Well, I don't have time for this, Richard. I you, have to be here for you. You look beautiful every single day. Is there anything, though, that you would like to change? Well, every once in a while, I wish I had my hair a little different because, you know, I don't have time to really, like, straighten it out maybe sometimes or do different things with it because I'm always rushing to get here. Well, maybe we can make that happen today on The Richard Bay Show. I hope so. Better do a good job. <laughs> well, that was Priscilla, the young lady who caught this man's eye and is so lovely. Well, how do you gild the lily? Who would take a chisel to Michelangelo's David? Who would lift a paintbrush and try to improve the Mona Lisa? How could you make Griselle even more alluring and stunning than she already is? You'll find out when we come back. More staff makeovers after this break. Behind the scenes here today on The Richard Bay Show, introducing you to all the people that make this show happen. Now, you remember just before we went to break, you met the lovely Griselle, who is a production assistant on this show. Now, she is lovely to begin with. This man even pointed that out to everybody here before the program started today as he saw her walk across the floor. This is what she looked like when she showed up today. And she is beautiful before a makeover. What could they possibly do to her to make her more alluring and glamorous? Let's find out. Griselle, please step on out and show your lovely self to the world. Oh, Griselle. You look beautiful, but you always do, even though you say you don't. Now, they did something to your hair, I noticed, right? Yeah. They straightened your hair out. And what, 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 what else did they do to you, and well, how does it make you feel? Well, it makes me feel different, because I feel like I was pampered for once, because I'm always taking care of everything else around here, so I don't really have time for my, um, oh, you want to be for my life. <laughs> oh, wait a second. Now, this man up over here, I just gave you a little kiss on the cheek, but this man up here was really an admirer of yours, right? You think she's beautiful. I think she's beautiful well, before the makeover and after she looks gorgeous. Well, why don't you tell her boyfriend, Wally? Because he's sitting right over here. Stand up, Wally. Would you like to shake this man's hand? He knows. <laughs> he's got good taste, is what he says. Wally, you like what you say? Yes, I like what I you. know you do. You're a very lucky man. All right, congratulations. Thank you, Richard. Now, you know on this program, you know the phrase that I always shout out. Help me with it. Where do they find these people? Well, it's one matter to find them. It's another matter to get them here. Uh, but getting them here is not easy, as you'll find out when you look at this clip. Our travel coordinator, Carol, will tell her story. This is Carol, our travel coordinator. Now, it's Carol's job to get guests to the Richard Bay Show from all over the country. They come by plane, by train, by Zeppelin, rickshaw, horseback. Carol has to make sure that they're here in the studio in time for the show. She works very hard. Sometimes she's working seven days a week to get those guests in. Carol, can I interrupt you for one second? I know that... Uh, can you put that guest on hold for one second? Sure, we'll do. Go ahead no. and put you on hold a minute. Okay, Carol, I know you have a very intense job. The phones are ringing all the time, and you're talking to agencies and, and uh, getting tickets for people, and yet you always look so well put together. The only thing is, Carol, you come here 
dressed every day as if you were going out to a country and western bar to do the two-step. You love denim. You love this sort of cowboy look, don't you? Yes, I do. I know. Would you stand up, please, so we can see what you look like now? All right, there you are. Could you take a little spin for us, Carol? And now click those cowboy boots together <laughs> because we've got a big surprise for you today. Do you? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we sure do. Carol, the travel coordinator who brings all of our guests in from the four corners of the globe, has been transformed. This is what she looked like when she showed up for work today to sit by the telephone. This is what she looks like now. Carol, step on out. Whoa. Absolutely lovely. Yeah. You do look great. And this man in the audience, I'm sure, especially appreciates it. This is your boyfriend? Yes, it is. And your name, sir? Chubby. Ch chubby. <laughs> That's it. Chubby. Is that a joke or something? Oh, no, no, you're certainly not chubby. That's oh, been right. my name all my life. How long have you and Carol been going out? <laughs> About 18 years. <laughs> I've never seen you look so glamorous, even at a Richard Bay show party or special event. How do you feel, Carol? I feel just what you said, glamorous, um, very relaxed. I don't have to worry about people getting on planes and getting here on time for your lovely show. I know, Carol, I see, you know, this outfit is almost, there they come now, they're flying in at this moment. Carol, you, uh, the outfit is almost complete. There's one thing missing. A ring. I know, diamond. <laughs> Chubby, when are you going to get around to that little tiny ring? Uh, <laughs> give me the money to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> she sure looks great, though, huh? It's going to cost me money. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> you do look fantastic. Earlier in the show, we talked... Uh, uh, oh, actually, we didn't talk to her, Janine. This is a very important person. And it's a person that probably all the people here in the audience know about. Because how do you get tickets for the Richard Bay Show? What number did you call? Do you remember it? Uh, no, one two zero one three nine two. You called an eight hundred number and you still got tickets. Yep. All right. Well, shows you what I know. But the number is two zero one three nine two T I X X. And on the other end of that line is a young lady that you're about to meet. She makes sure that this audience is full of audience members ready to applaud and enjoy the Richard Bay Show experience. Her name is Janine. Take a look at this clip. This is the center of the office where we book audience for the Richard Bay Show. These people have to make sure that all those seats are filled behind me so we can at least have a program. Janine, you're one of those people that makes sure that the audience comes every single day, right? And uh, would you stand up, please, for a moment? Obviously, you made your fashion choice in the early 90s when the grunge look was in. You haven't moved on from then. You know, Nirvana was it. You're probably still listening to those old Nirvana albums. Um, but then again, you do have a tough long day here sitting yes, at this desk. We do. Audience department, we don't even have time to have lunch okay. here. We answer the phone constantly all day long, and then we have to go down and greet the audience, and we're busy from the time we come in to the time we walk out the door. All right, but tickets are absolutely free. There's a ticket right there. Mm -hmm. They're worth about ten times that price. People can get them if they call what number? 201-392-8499. All right. Now, when you come down, Janine will be one of the lovely people who takes care of you in the audience of the Richard Bay Show. But you may not recognize her. She may look a bit different. At least she will today by the end of this program. All right. That was Janine. Now, Janine's boyfriend is Eli. And as you were watching that clip, you told me something special that I didn't know. What did you see in that uh, clip of your lovely girlfriend? She was wearing my shirt. She was wearing your shirt. <laughs> Well, she's not wearing your shirt now. Janine, please step on down. Wow. Looking good, huh? She looks fabulous. Ah, it's done for words. Go up there and give her a kiss. You do look fabulous. I've never seen you like this, Janine. How do you feel? I feel great. Well, he's going to feel good in a moment, too, because he's going to show you how good you look. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Stay with us.
of our makeovers involves Anthony, who is a producer on our staff, has been around here for a while. Um, take a look at this tape. That'll explain more of what Anthony does and what he looks like. Now, this is Anthony. Anthony's a producer on The Richard Bay Show, and it's his job to pre-interview all the guests, make sure that their stories fit together, and to make sure that their stories are real. Always because real. Always real. Because you can fool Ricky Lake. You can fool Oprah Winfrey, but you can't fool Dick Bay. First, you shouldn't be able to fool Anthony. But all of that hard work has left him frazzled. He was a young man when he first came here. He has sort of like that suffering, pained, frazzled, poetic look. I don't think you even care about what you throw on in the morning before you come here. I don't even think about it, Richard. Right. Well, you've <laughs> got to pack those bags under your eyes and, uh, and, and move on along with your life. Oh, I could see you dressed up with the sort of um, ethereal, poetic air that uh, a Hugh Grant has. You know, you could, you could be the Hugh Grant of the office. Oh. Yeah, I, that would be great. Yeah, let's try this. Frightfully sorry. I, I shouldn't have done that. Oh. Frightfully sorry. I, I shouldn't have done that. See, look at that. I think we could have a big transformation of you by the end of the day. I think you could be the next Hugh Grant. I, I need a change. I know that. <laughs> okay. Or Ulysses S. Grant. <laughs> Let's see what we do to him. <laughs> well, <laughs> if he's going to lo look like Hugh Grant, he's going to have to take a U-turn from what he looked like when he showed up this morning. Take a look at this. There is Anthony. He's just schlubbing along there. <laughs> yes. It's painful to look at, but here's the new Anthony. Step on down, Anthony. Well, not exactly your grand, but a very sophisticated supper look. Anthony. Oh. Little Anthony, you look imperial. But what do our, what do our panel of judges think over here? Yes? <laughs> They give you a rating of uh, 1.3 over here, though. But, Anthony, that is a big Harry change. Harry likes me. Yes? And, and, and the color of your hair, the color of your hair is interesting, Tomato too, sauce. Anthony. I'm sure it's sending viewers across the country scurrying to the dial to try to adjust the color to get it just right. Um, how do you, yes. how do you like your new look? Uh, it's okay. It would take me a little bit too long every day to do something like this, though. Okay. Well, the, the so. person and the people who made all of these looks today happen are the people who help me to get prepared for the show every day. They are Marianne Muro, our makeup and hair consultant, and Nicole Fevrier Davis, an image consultant. Please welcome them <laughs> to the show and salute the fine work they've done on our staff. All right. Uh, uh, when you first look at somebody, where do you begin to make them over? I mean, uh, do you, is, there a, is there a piece of their hair or face? or? It's, it's usually their personality first. You know, you have to look at the person and find out what they really want to look like. And then you can take it from there. You can, you know, develop a look according to how they feel inside rather than what they look like. Don't you agree, Marianne? Yeah, definitely. Well, you're, personality Marianne, first. you handle makeup, but it's yes. got to be more than just personality if somebody's got a big hawk nose and you've got to worry about it or I come in and I have these little pouches under my eyes these uh, you know you've got to worry about that there's a cosmetic thing you have to take care of first isn't there Marianne Absolutely. yeah okay who was your favorite makeover of the day um, gosh that's a hard question because Anthony was a big win so was Carrie and Michelle. so was Michelle. Michelle well, was fabulous. I was but Michelle, Michelle here, look, you had so much to work with with Michelle. What <laughs> fabulous. Did, when you first look at Michelle, stand up, please, Michelle. No doubt. What, let's go through the process a bit. When you look at Michelle, what did you start with? Well, first of all, Michelle has a fabulous body. You would never know that on a regular You're basis. You're kidding me. <laughs> Why don't you bring it to work sometime? Uh, you look good home today, huh, Rich? Yes, okay. But this is something you would never know if you'd seen her in the office on a daily basis. So that's what, that's what I wanted to play up. Her assets, obviously. Her bust line look great. She's got fabulous legs, so that's what we wanted to work with. Michelle, don't get she also has a gorgeous again. face, so yes. it was... Uh, well, speaking of gorgeous faces, look at Griselle. Now, Griselle, is, she has so much going for her, even before you even put the... Uh, the paintbrush to her. Uh, right, right. How do you decide what to do to somebody like Griselle, who has, who has, you know, sparkling eyes, beautiful hair, whether it's straight or curly? That, that is exactly why I chose the dress that I did, because I didn't want it to overwhelm her looks. She's got fabulous looks. She should show them off. She shouldn't try to hide them. So this, in essence, accents her coloring and keeps it simple while, while Marianne does her thing. Right, right but at the other end of the spectrum, 
you have Elizabeth, who is my favorite makeover of the day, because oh. I could never imagine you like that. Elizabeth, Elizabeth, if you remember her before shot, she wants to cover everything up. She wants to, she doesn't want to accentuate all the things that are accentuated here. So how did you go digging in there to bring it all out? What did you do to her face, Marianne? Well, what I did first is I, I kind of ducked because I thought Elizabeth was going to kill me because I was going to put makeup on her. Right. And, it, well, she's beautiful, so it was really easy to do, Elizabeth. I mean, she has great eyes. We just brought out her eyes and just gave her some lipstick, and we just gave her hair a little height. I mean, Elizabeth is really a beautiful girl, yeah. so it was quite easy to make her up. And I think the earrings, really, I got to, I mean, I, listen, I know nothing about this. But for me, the earrings really give a shape to your face. They sort of frame your shape in a sparkle and just sort of liven everything up. Thanks. Okay. Next time we go out, I'll wear them for you. <laughs> okay, thank you. We're going to take a break. We're going to go out on you, but just for two minutes. We'll be right back. Stay with us. is a full We've all worked together for so long, it's almost like a family. But you know what families do. They appear on Bay's Family Feud. All right. And here to help me with Bay's Family Feud is the lovely Menel, someone who doesn't need a makeover at all. Thank you very much, Menel. And today's topic is Menel. Plastic surgery. Talk show hosts who've had plastic surgery. Who is it, Michelle? Ricky Lake. No, it is not Ricky Lake. It's not one of the answers. All right, let's go to the other side. Yes. Oprah Winfrey. Oprah Winfrey. Oprah Winfrey. No, is not one of the. Uh, back over here. Yes. Larry King. It, it is not Larry King. All right, back over here. We lost out. Yes. Geraldo. Well, Geraldo probably had his nose fixed. Uh, but that, does not, that does not qualify. Come on, guys, you Jenny know that. Jones. Jenny Jones is an answer. She is up there, number three, number three. There you go, Jenny Jones. All right. All right, ten points for this side. All right, so it's in your court. Another host, another TV talk show host who's had plastic surgery. Regis Philbin, Regis Philbin. Regis, Regis Philbin, Philbin, Regis Philbin, yes! It's reported Regis Philbin had his eyes done. Number two, Menon. Regis Philbin! Thank you very much. All right. So far, it's two to nothing. Still on your side. Do you get it wrong? Yes? Sally, Sally Jesse Raphael, number one, yes! Plastic surgery victim. Now, to make it a clean sweep, a clean sweep for this side. Which TV talk show host has had the most plastic surgery? Probably more plastic surgery than any other host. That is the last name that is hidden on our board. Oh. Yes, any answer here? Come on. I gave you a big hint now. They've had the most. The mo no, not William F. Buckley. Who? Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. no. I'll tell you what, you can take it away here. You cannot go down an agonizing defeat. If you come up, she is, or he is, the TV talk show host who's had the most plastic surgery. In fact, she makes no secret of it. Does that help at all? Joan Rivers. Joan Rivers, number four. Stay with us as we have our staff all made over. Don't you make off for another channel, because we'll be back in just... Well, you've gone behind the scenes here today on the Richard Bay Show. You've met our great staff, the people who help to bring you this show every day, but people you haven't met are the people that were behind this show, 
who are all the people who worked on the makeovers and on the transformations and on the costumes and on the new clothing for our staff. We'd like to bring them out and give them a big round of applause. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. From all of us here to all of you out there, as always, all our best. Take care. There's no reason to panic.